One thing I have never done as a filmmaker is rigged out a DSLR or mirrorless camera into like a cinema camera rig. But for this video, I pulled some strings, talked to small rig, and they sent me the professional Fujifilm X-T4 cage. Uh, real quick on that note, this video is not a sponsored video, but they did send me their cage. So shout out to small rig. Thank you for helping me make better videos. Now, the real reason why everybody rigs out their camera isn't to get better footage, although that might be a byproduct. The real reason is so that you look cool in front of your clients. So today we're gonna see how cool can I look in front of you. I don't have any clients. And if I'm gonna do this right, I'm gonna need some help from a friend. Chris. Hey, how's it I'm going? Good, how are you? Good, I hear we're gonna make a rig video. Yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for meeting up. Of course, of course, let's do it. We were gonna shoot under here, but it's way too windy. We can go find a new spot. This will work, I think. We're gonna be putting this mini mat box small rig on. The important thing, Ninja 5. Ooh, cool. So the Ninja will actually give us, what, 4K 10 bit? 4K 10 bit, up 4K to 60 bit. frames a second. Also, it'll just be a beautiful monitor it on is. top of the camera. Very easy to see outside today. It's not <laughs> the brightest, but it works when it is really bright. Yep. All right, let me break down all the items in this setup. First up, obviously, like we've mentioned, we have the Small Rig Fujifilm Professional Kit, which includes the Small Rig RE locating handle, the wooden NATO side handle, and a cable clamp for the HDMI and USB-C. And on the front of the camera, we have the new Small Rig Mini Map Box. This is what really makes you look like you know what you're doing. And just to top it off, I threw my Rode video mic on there. I have a love-hate relationship with this thing. I always forget to turn it off, and then it dies. And then of course, on top, we have the beautiful Atomos Ninja 5 5 inch display and recorder. This allows us to get that beautiful 10 bit 4K. Unfortunately, I couldn't shoot in 4K 60. I think it was because of my SD cards, but I didn't realize this was going to be a problem before it was too late. So we just had to shoot everything in 24. But I think regardless, the video footage looks pretty good. My remote died. I didn't think to charge it. I only charged the board. Real life YouTube. Real life YouTube. Dead boosted boards. Big cameras. Chris, thank you for your help. You're very welcome. This looks beautiful. You're beautiful. I guess I should give you back, give you back your gear, eh? Oh, shoot. If you want. If you want. I'll take it back, yeah. I should probably give it back. So let me share some of my thoughts on this setup. The first thing we can talk about is this cage system. Like I mentioned, this is my first cage. It was my first time shooting with a cage. I really do like having that extra handle on top and the handle on the side. Uh, my only thing is that I wish I could move it to the other side because on my red, I'm very familiar with right hand on the handle, left hand underneath the lens. Where, where on this setup, it's on the left. That's probably not a problem for most people. The cool thing about this is that this is very modular, but that is the cool thing about having a cage with all these threads. You can buy attachments and pretty much do whatever you can imagine. I really could mix this up, throw literally anything anywhere. Speaking of the threads, there is no shortage of threads on this thing. Pretty much if there was a spot to put a thread, they put a thread. And then as far as the design and build, this thing feels very sturdy. The wood feels nice. The metal feels good. It doesn't feel cheap or plasticky. It's great. All right, enough about the cage. And then the Ninja, I've always been a fan of external monitors. It just makes the filming experience so much nicer. I hate filming on little tiny screens. Uh, even on my red, I made sure I bought the biggest red monitor they had. No issues there, it's a great product, a lot of fun to shoot with. Overall though, I do have some thoughts on the setup. When I was filming, it felt sort of top heavy and I was getting some jitters. If you look in the footage here, you can really see it. Uh, but when I was filming, I felt like I was kind of fighting the balance of the setup. Now, if I didn't run into the issue of not being able to shoot in 60, uh, I wouldn't have had this problem because this, the 60 would have masked the jitters. But there's also another solution which I think would also help my second problem. My second problem being the battery. I don't think any mirrorless camera is known for having good battery life. They're all just pretty meh. So if you're going to create a rig like this, I would highly recommend adding a real system with a V-mount battery, or in my case, using a USB power bank and just USB-C right into the camera. Not only would that provide more power, it would also help balance the whole system and it might just smooth out those jitters for me. But regardless, I think I looked pretty cool. If we weren't shooting in the middle of nowhere, I'm sure somebody would have come up to me and said, hey, what movie are you shooting? <laughs> 
Yep. Actually, on that note, my RED is a very heavy camera and I shoot handheld 24 frames per second all the time and the jitter and shake is very manageable. Within reason, you still wanna shoot on a wide angle if you're shooting handheld. But unfortunately, even with the IBIS and digital stabilization, the jitters just don't feel natural on this setup. And the best way to combat that is adding more weight. So next time I decide to rig out a camera like this, I'm gonna make sure I get a USB power bank, plug it into the Fujifilm, get a better SD card, and put a little bit more weight into the rig. But regardless though, if you are a filmmaker shooting on a mirrorless camera or a small camera, even like a black magic, I would highly recommend rigging it up to make it look a little bit more beefy. I know this is a silly concept, but coming from the guy who spent way too much money on a brand new red cinema camera, the size of your camera matters. At least to some people. And usually those people are the ones who are paying you. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time.